lunch and learn session. Um, my name is Sas Brandy, and today I'll be talking about um, Grandstream GDMS and how to manage Grandstream devices and take full advantage of its features. So what is a GDMS? A uh, Grandstream device management system is a cloud based solution that provides centralized interface to provision, manage, monitor, and troubleshoot Grandstream products before, during, and after the deployment. Uh, all these servers are hosted in AWS, so there's no question about its reliability, and it is completely free. Um, GDMS provides fantastic easy to use tools to manage Grandstream devices. Um, one of the main reasons to use GDMS is to simplify your mass provisioning of Grandstream devices. Um, so you can connect all the Grandstream devices to the network and GDMS will take care of the rest. Um, you can also configure unlimited site and organizations. So um, you can add and manage all your clients in one interface. Um, also, there's fantastic features for administrators to make their life so much easier, such as alert notifications, task scheduling, uh, remote diagnostics, and real-time monitoring. We'll get to this in uh, more into this during the demo. As I said earlier, uh, one of the biggest advantage of using GDMS is its mass provisioning feature. Um, this will save so much time and manpower when it comes to configuring and deploying Grandstream devices. Um, so you don't have to unpack all the devices and configure them one by one before sending out to your customers who wants to do that. Uh, you can just simply add all the devices to GDMS and create configuration templates for them. So the as soon as the device plugs into the network, by default, the grant, it will send a request to GDMS to see if there's any configuration files available. And um, if there's any configuration files available for those particular MAC addresses, um, GDMS will push out these settings uh, to these handsets. Uh, there's three different types of uh, configuration templates you can configure in Grandstream. First one is device, con device config. That is mainly for uh, one particular uh, back address, one particular handset if you, uh, device if you want to provision it. And the next one is model templates. Uh, with this, you can provision the entire uh, model range. Say you have 100 of uh, GXP 2170s. Uh, you can provision all of them with one provisioning template. And uh, group templates is similar to the model templates, but instead of one particular model, this is uh, limited to one particular series. So you can provision the entire series of GXP or GRP handsets with one template. Um, GDMS uh, allows you to create multiple organizations and assign specific users to separate management. So for example, if you are a managed service provider and have hundreds of different uh, customers and organizations, uh, you can give their local administrators access to the uh, Grandstream GDMS so they can manage their own organization and all the uh, sites and zip trunks under there. Um, as you can see in this diagram, uh, platform administrator will have access to all the organizations in the GDMS, but the um, organization administrators will only have access to the, uh, only that organization, all the sites and uh, zip trunks associated with that organization. Um, so how do you sign up? Uh, simply go to www.gdms.cloud and you can create your free, uh, free account in a few minutes. So uh, let's have a quick look how this all works. All right.
first of all, uh, go to www.gdms.cloud. And over here, you can create your free account if you don't have one. I've already created my account, so let's log in. Um, if you've used Grandstream devices before, uh, you can see a familiar interface similar to the GWN Cloud and all the UCM series. So under the dashboard, you can see an overview of the entire GDMS, how many devices do you have, what sort of device types do you have in your uh, GDMS account, and um, what's their status if they're online or offline. And under device distribution, uh, you, I only have uh, devices connected in one location, but if you have devices uh, connect, configured throughout the Australia or throughout the world, you can see where the devices are con uh, connected to the ne network. And the device list, you can just simply see a list of all the devices that is in GDMS. Um, like I said before, uh, you can create multiple different organizations. So uh, let's just quickly, to do that, uh, click the organization button and you can see all the organization that is available. And if you want to create a different organization and just simply click create organization down here. And let's make this Perth office. And over here, this is where you configure the SAS is, that's me, that's a platform administrator. And over here, you can uh, configure users to access that particular organization as an organization administrator. So let's give Scott Young access to the Perth office. And you can uh, clone your devices. So if you uh, clone your organization, say if you have a few templates uh, configured in Melbourne office, you can clone all of them into the Perth one, just simply from here. And um, you can select if you want the VoIP system or the UCMRC system. UCMRC is the uh, PBX management system and the web is for the all the web devices. All of them, and you can just accept. And over here, you can see the path of it. All right, so before we go into the web systems, let's switch to the UCMRC system. That's the PBX management. Uh, only the UCM uh, 63 series support for the uh, Grandstream JDMS. So if you go here, and if you go to UCM devices, oh, let's, I've configured uh, UCM under Melbourne office. So if you go to uh, UCM devices and you can see all the UCM, say if you have hundreds of UCMs, hundred, hundreds of clients using Grandstream museums, you can configure them, all of them here and you can manage them easily. So to add them, you can just click add device and enter the MAC address of the UCM and the initial password. The initial password is the um, password that you can find at the back of the branch stream uh, UCMs. They are not admin admin anymore. They have a unique password configured for each um, branch stream device which you can find at the back of the device. And um, you can assign it to a site and whatnot here. I've already configured a UCM here. And say if you want to remotely access it, you can just simply uh, click the uh, PBX and you'll be able to access the PBX remotely. So that makes it so much easier for administrators. Say you have hundreds of, hundred or thousand of uh, PBXs here, you can just simply, you don't have to remember their IP addresses or go through shortcuts, just field, uh, find the PBX here and you can remotely access it within a few minutes. Um, and under here, yeah, you can just see device details, see like an overview of the UCM. And uh, UCMRC diagnostics with this, uh, let's restart diagnostics. With this, you can take a packet capture and uh, say you have any issues with the UCM or custom serving audio issues, you can take a packet capture and find out what's going on 
in uh, you can open that in uh, Wireshark. To do and under call sets, I actually, uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I haven't made any calls. If I ha uh, have any calls going on on that PBX, you'll be able to see the call quality and all the call sets under call statistics. But, um, the rest of the settings are similar to the uh, IP sys uh, web system. So let's switch into that. Yeah. Uh, once you switch to the web systems, uh, you see overview. It's similar to the dashboard, the overview of the particular organization. You can see how many devices and US distribution and whatnot. And um, under VoIP accounts, uh, you can you can create, configure few VoIP accounts. I've just configured two Alloy Voice VoIP accounts, so you can I can assign them into the uh, devices. Um, and Others, uh, the, over these uh, web accounts are the accounts from the PBX branch in the UCMs. So you can just filter all the accounts from here and um, see them. And you can, you don't have to add one by one. You can just simply impl import all the, if you have multiple zip accounts, you can import all of them using a grandstream template. You can download it from here. And SIP server, similar to accounts, you can configure different SIP servers here. I've uh, configured one for the SIP, uh, Alloy Voice SIP, and the rest is just a Alloy uh, UCM uh, SIP servers. Next, we have, and just to add a different server, click Add here, and you can configure the uh, server name, server SIP server if you have outbound proxy, and other details here. Um, next, we have web devices. If you go into here, uh, you can see all the devices in that organization. And under here, you can see if they are online or offline. If they're online, they'll be green and offline devices will be grayed out. Um, let's see how to add. So to add a device, you can click add device here. And I have a GXP data. To add uh, web devices, you need both uh, MAC address and serial number. You can enter wrong. So enter the MAC address here. Yep. And find this at the back of the uh, device or on the box. And you can assign it to different um, site if you want. So let's assign it to the South Melbourne office now. Click save. So this is the new device that I just added. And over here, uh, you can configure accounts. So I had few SIP accounts earlier, so I can assign, I wanna assign the this SIP account to the handset and it will push out the approaching details automatically and in few minutes it will be registered. And under set parameters, um, you you can just change all the settings for that, almost all the settings or from here. Uh, for this particular handset, say you want to uh, authenticate incoming invites, you can do that. And only from a PIX, uh, SIP proxy server, you can enable this. And over here, you can see how many changes you've made to this uh, device. Um, you can find almost all the settings here, but um, if you can't find a particular setting you're after, uh, you can simply switch to a uh, text editor and enter the p-value. Um, if you don't know the p-value, uh, there's an easier way to find it. So this is what I usually do. So um, log into one of the devices manually. So would help if I type the correct password. There you go, perfect. Okay. Say, go to coffee features. And you can't find this particular setting uh, in that over here on the GUI. So what you can do is you can log into the device 
and go to the setting that you want and right click and inspect. Once you do that, uh, over here, you can see under name, the P value of that particular setting. So you can copy that, let's close this and go into the text editor and enter the P value and the whatever the setting you want here, I think that's a yes no setting, so it will be one or one or zero, and you can save and apply. And now the account should be configured. Yep, the this is the account that I uh, registered. Now it's registered with the SIP account. And over here you can that's the parameters that was, I spoke earlier. And device diagnostics is the same as the uh, UCM. Say if your client have any call uh, audio issues, you don't have to worry about uh, logging, going to that site and running Wireshark capture on those servers. You can just simply log into the device from here and take a packet capture from uh, GDMS straight away. So it makes it so much easier if you have any, if, if you want to troubleshoot any issues. Same goes with the SIP logs and uh, ping and trace route traces. All right, um, and the other one is here. You can just see operation logs, and if you have any tasks scheduled, you can see a task history here. And um, with this, okay, uh, with this setting, disable push notifications, which actually I've done it for this particular handset. Uh, once you do that, it won't send out any configuration changes that you made. So you can make all the changes that you want for this hand for this handset, and you can push push them out later. And you can just simply allow push configuration, and it will push out that configuration to that handset, but it will configure. And you can reboot and factory save from here as well. Um, next. We have templates. These are the model templates and the group templates I spoke about earlier. So if you want to configure a model template, go to uh, by model and add a model template. GRP model template. And you can assign it to a specific site on the organization or all the sites. Uh, like to all the, all the sites. Um, again, you can upload the configuration file, the text document, or you can go through the parameters like before and set them up. Uh, similar to the model templates, the group templates, once you, uh, you can select which Group, uh, group of uh, which series you want, say you select GRP. GRP. Right. The next, then it will show all the uh, GRP handsets that's available in the GDMS. And you can select whatever the handset you want. And after that, it's the same thing. You can set parameters here and then switch to a text editor if you want to add P values. Uh, next one is the model template, the uh, CFG files. Uh, this is good if you want to move your uh, provisioning templates from your provisioning server to GDMS. So you can simply upload that uh, provisioning file here. I think I have one. Yeah. Um, I actually have one for this. Um, yeah, for this one. So I don't think this is configured now. Yeah, so there's no configuration here. We can simply upload that configuration file. And it, it will automatically push that configuration to the uh, transfer meter I have here. 
Expo Ops, it will take a few minutes. And you can go to that task and see what's the status of that. So it's uh, sending the configuration file to the handset. And under sites, uh, you can create unlimited sites for the organization and, and sub sites if you want. And you can see all the uh, devices assigned to this particular site. Again, you can import them via site template or just add one by one. Um, should be provision now. Let's quickly. Yeah, perfect. So it took about two minutes, and the configuration file that I uploaded automatically sent uh, sent to the device and it's registered. Uh, under task, you can create different tasks here, and over here you can see the configuration. Uh, configuration file that we send to that handset. And if you add task, you can schedule them. Uh, you can do uh, factory resets, reboots, upgrade firmwares, upgrade, upgrade configuration files, and you can schedule them and, or you can just push them out immediately as well. You can select all the devices here. Um, Diagnostics we talked about earlier uh, to uh, take a packet capture and stuff, and you can see all the previous diagnostics in the list here. Stop the diagnostic for that handset. Um, under resources, you can see all the new firmware here, but if you want to upload an old firmware, you can uh, you have the option to upload a new firmware here as well. Um, and under resources over here, you can upload ringtones, uh, pictures, and language packs and stuff. Say if you want to upload a custom ringtone, you can upload the file here. And if you can go to the web device, I believe that setting would be under yeah over here, phone settings, and you can select the custom ringtone that you uploaded. Um, over here, you can configure alert notifications. Say you want to be notified for if if any of the handsets goes down or uh, factory reset, or if your UCM is out of storage and whatnot. You can configure uh, notifications and um, send it to the admins. Um, under channel, this is mainly for the ERP channel partners. Uh, so you. You can get a list of all the handsets that you purchase and add them and automatically assign them to sub uh, channel sub companies. And other, uh, this is where you configure the other users. So you can configure them as organization admins. So I added Adam and Scott, and you can just to add a new one, just simply select the organization and username and email. Um, that is pretty much it. That's just a simple overview of Grandstream GDMS. Um, do you guys have any questions that I can help you? Uh, I do have one. Um, mm -hmm. We've been toying with GDMS for a couple of months now. And right. we've noticed, uh, particularly with the Grandstream ATAs, the, the HT801s and 802s, we're finding a lot of them aren't provisioning their configuration until we do a firmware upgrade. Um, for anything we're on site with, that's not a problem. But if we send devices to customers and then we have to walk them through a firmware upgrade over the phone, that's a bit awkward. Um, is there, yeah, no. is there any, is that a known thing? Um, it just seems to happen for the majority of HT 801s, but we haven't right, had that so. issue with like the, the Wi-Fi phones or any of the VoIP handsets. Right. So uh, possibly the uh, HTs that uh, 
might be on an older firmware that is not supported in GDMS. That's why you might have to up, uh, update the firmware. Okay. So it, it won't be an issue. It's just a, uh, it might be just an older firmware that is not supported in GDMS. Okay. Yeah. Just to add to that there, Daniel. So depending on how, you know, how old the, the stock is, or not how old it is, but how long it's been sitting in Grand Stream Warehouse and the LA Warehouse, will you know will depend on what firmware version is sitting on the device when it ships to you if you do want firmware um upgraded before it gets sent to you please let your account manager know um and we and we can look at upgrading firmware before they ship to you so that you don't have this issue anymore okay cool i didn't know that was an option thanks So is there any other questions? I guess that's no, it. I'm all good. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Um, I will see you in the next Lunch and Learn session. Thank you very much.